Hi everyone, this is Fern Freak, and today I'm pleased to bring you a sneak preview of Autumn Dynasty's multiplayer skirmish gameplay. This is pretty much the first time we are doing a battle cast for an RTS game on the iPad, so we are still in the process of figuring out how best to present it. Over here, we've got a camera mounted over the iPad so that we can show off some of the hand gestures which accompany gameplay. Today's match is going to be between Fern Freak, that's me, and Game the Boy, that's Jeffrey, and the map is Anseong River. After giving this a go, I now have tons of respect for those who can commentate matches and keep up with all the action. I think I can't, so for now I'm just going to settle for explaining the game as we go along. So here goes. In Autumn Dynasty, each player starts off with a thousand gold, so figuring out how to spend that is quite crucial. There are quite a number of different build orders available, so let's take a look at what Game the Boy is using. If you saw that panel just now, he's just researched the Offensive 1 Doctrine, which is going to improve his Swordsman and Catapults, and that will also unlock some of their special abilities. So true to form, he has indeed built two Swordsmen, but with the rest of his gold, he's chosen to build a, an outpost, as well as a farm. That outpost is going to speed up his research upgrades, while the farm will help with his production speed. On the other hand, I'm using a totally different strategy here. I've already got three cavalry units, and I'm building a fourth one so that I can rush Game the Boy for a quick kill. If you've noticed, the base unit limit for Autumn is three armies, but part of my build order includes a camp, and that lets me up it to four. By not building any farms or outposts, I'm sacrificing my economic and research development here, but if I can tie his units down, that could strangle him in the early game. One of the cool things about Autumn Dynasty is that it's fully multi-touch and I can control my army simultaneously with as many fingers as I can use. That makes micromanagement really easy and gives rise to many interesting strategies. I can see that while I've been busy training cavalry, Game Boy has been busy building his empire. He's actually expanded to the center. But that's not going to help him much though, because he's only got two swordsmen against my four horses. Horsemen are effective against swordsmen, but they aren't too good against buildings. Game Boy is pulling his swordsman back in the hope that my horses are going to get entangled in that city fighting, but I know better and I'm going to go after him. Game Boy has brought up a spear unit to counter my cavalry, but I'm making use of the superior mobility of my horses to evade him. I'm swinging round from the rear to attack his fort, that's his only production center, while his slow moving infantry units are milling around trying to defend his expansion. In autumn, units and buildings block each other, so tactical positioning is extremely important. Whenever hostile units meet, they get entangled in fighting, so in order to regain mobility for my horsemen just now, I had to pull them back from attacking the buildings and swing around to chase his swordsmen. While I've been having a fairly good run so far, it's not going as well as I would have hoped. My cavalry was split up earlier, and I haven't been able to take down any of Game Boy's buildings yet. While I've been neglecting my economy, he's been building more and more spearmen, and it's getting increasingly difficult to find soft targets for the horses to attack. Notice that he's got two outposts now, and that means that his research is blazing ahead. One of those outposts is burning, so maybe I should get rid of one of them in order to slow down his upgrades. Alright, so maybe that was not such a good idea, and I'm putting my horse back across the river. Terrain is a very important part of tactical positioning. Horses are fast and therefore very powerful in the open plains, but they are greatly slowed when crossing rough terrain like forests or rivers. Infantry and archers move a lot faster in forests and can hide in them, but a player like me, who knows how to use terrain to make good my escape, might have a much better chance of winning. Ouch, that wasn't good at all. Thanks to his outposts. I haven't been able to clear, Game Boy has completed his first research upgrade and that's unlocked the avalanche ability for a swordsman. Whenever his units are adjacent to a mountain, they are going to be able to drop rocks on my armies now, so I'm going to have to think twice about using mountains as cover for my units. And actually, maybe I really should get my horses out of there. Game Boy is pretty entrenched now and he's attempting to chase down and surround my cavalry. It's probably also a good time to send my units back to heal at my fort as well as stop neglecting my economy. We might have lost another horse, but at least this one managed to get away. Alright, back to Game Boy's screen. 
He's now controlling half the map, and I don't think I have as many buildings as he does. While I'm short of gold now, his farms are making sure that he's got plenty of it. He's crossed the river and built one tower in the north, and now he's building another tower in the middle. I think he really wants to stop my cavalry from raiding his side of the map. It's really fortifying the center now, and I think I need to do something about that, but I don't think I'm going to be able to reach there in time. I think I'm going to have to expand towards my rear areas to the east, and then try to dislodge him when I'm caught up in strength. In Autumn Dynasty, buildings can only be built on built sites, which are spread out across the map, and that makes controlling and protecting territory crucial. Great, I've got all these empty built sites, where it looks safe to put all my buildings, but I've got to keep him at bay even as he starts encroaching on my territory. I'm building some archers to counter his spearmen, which were giving my horses much grief earlier on in this campaign, but unfortunately he seems to have gotten the second level offensive doctrine as well, which allows his swordsmen to place smoke. Whenever one of his units are in smoke, my archers can't see them as well, so my arrows are much less effective on his troops. Good thing my cavalry has already been reinforced, and they aren't affected by smoke. So I chased him all the way back into the forest, because it looked as if he was withdrawing in the face of my onslaught. But it turned out that Game Boy was really smart, and that was actually just a feint. All the time he knew that that forest was on the edge of a mountain, and he was just luring me closer and closer to it just waiting to drop that avalanche on my pursuing troops. So that's the second time it's happened to me tonight. At this point, I was thinking that he would have a ton of troops advancing through the forest to follow up on his victory. So I tried setting it on fire in the hope that it would burn up all his armies. A combined arrow storm from my archers would slow all these armies down as well and trap them within the flames. On hindsight, I think it only split his troops, but at least it made it a lot easier for me to annihilate his two infantry units, which were cut off from support and retreat. The bigger threat now is that he's expanding to the position south of my base, and I'm completely unaware of it because I'm concentrating on the forest passage, and I don't have any units scouting the south. With the forest fire dying down, Game Boy is once again able to send units across to attack but I can't relight the forest while it's still darkened and burnt. I really need to get rid of his fort in the center which is producing and reinforcing all those units which are attacking me right now, so I'm bringing up a catapult to take out his fort and base. Since I know that the forest is all that stands between him and my base, I've also sent my troops to construct a tower just north of the forest to hit any enemies trying to pass through. Unfortunately, while all my units are positioned to the west, Game to Boy has found the perfect opportunity to strike from the south, and here my catapult is completely undefended. Another well timed forest fire saves the day once more, but one of Game to Boy's spearmen slipped in through from the south and succeeded in taking out one of my camps. That means I'm supply blocked until I can rebuild it. Luckily, that catapult survived in the chaos and I'm bringing it back up to the front line to attack Game of the Boy's base. Game of the Boy's counter attack is being followed by my new tower, but he's re just responded by getting a catapult of his own. Catapults cannot normally target units, but he's unlocked the Offensive Doctrine Bombard ability, which allows catapults to attack a position, dealing damage to clusters of units. He's just attempted to use it to force my catapult out of position in order to save his buildings, but I am sharp enough to notice it and move my catapult away in time. With my tower in place, Game Boy is going to have a tough time reaching my catapult, and I'm free to lob stones at him from behind the mountains. I also think that he's out of acumen, which means he won't be able to use smoke or shields to mount an assault using his units in the face of all those arrows from my tower and archers. There's one way that Gamed Boy can stop my catapult from taking out his base, and that's to eliminate my tower. That tower is currently granting me line of sight to his base, allowing my catapult to hit him from over the mountains. 
He's trying really hard to get rid of my tower using his own catapult, and he looks like he's going to succeed soon. That means I'm going to have to get some other units to spot for my catapult, so I'm sending in these archers to snipe at his swordsmen. Oh no, it's another avalanche. That's it. I'm going to set this whole forest on fire again, and hopefully that should let my catapult fire from behind the flames without getting disturbed anymore. Finally, the tide of battle turns in my favour. I have just about eliminated the game to boys forward base, except for that tower which is still on fire. As soon as it is down, my units will be rushing in to occupy it. Game to boys forces are in retreat. With a foothold in the centre, I can now roll back Game to boys entire army. There's more of the battle to be fought, but we're close to YouTube's 15 minute limit. I hope you've enjoyed this short introduction to Autumn Dynasty's tactics and I look forward to posting more videos soon.